Hey there Wargamers, this is Justin from Amp Services and uh, today's going to be something different. I'm going to be out of town for the next week or two because I've uh, had a, a vacation sprung on me that was free and you know who says no to going, uh, going out of the state for free. Uh, so I'm going to be gone. Uh, because I'm going to be gone I'm trying to do some pre-recorded content for Twitch and YouTube. Um, I've never done this before, but Twitch has the option to, to play some videos and stuff when you're not actually streaming. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, however, because it's not live, you're not going to hear me interacting with anyone. So that is the unfortunate aspect. But the cool thing is, um, I'm not going to be doing paint today. I'm going to be doing a conversion, a light conversion, to test the waters for uh, this pre-recorded stuff and see how it goes. Uh, before we get started, I would like to encourage you guys to... Um, uh, share this with your friends, try to help me grow the channel if you don't mind, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that follow button. I uh, generally don't try to um, uh, push that too hard on guys, but because this is uh, pre-recorded and I can't actually interact with you, uh, I think that's a good, uh, fair trade-off. So, anyway, let's uh, let's jump right in with what we're going to be working on today, and it's, it's more Primaris Marines, uh, to be honest with you. They're affordable and very, very um, cost-efficient for me to attempt to do uh, some live stream tutorials with and uh, for today we're going to be doing a, a conversion so I've got a little paper towel here let's move these bits over so you can see what we're going to be doing so we've got some more from the, uh, the small little starter box it's got the three set of Primaris and Reavers and I have plucked some bits from my collection and uh, by the end of this little video, you'll see what we're going to be working on. I've also got a little paper clip here, which I'll explain shortly. Uh, so, we are working with the model that um, I actually painted one of these recently, and it was the Dark Angel. You know, he's got his little gun up here like that, uh, or excuse me, like this. Uh, however, this is not how he's going to be. We're going to be lobbing some pieces off. Uh, so, other bits we've got here, so if you're trying to recreate this, um, you know, this is one of the heads from a Centurion kit. Uh, I thought maybe because it was a little bit bigger or uh, girthier it might fit better with the uh, Primaris armor since it's not quite the same scale as one of the Marines. This is an old flag from a, uh, an old uh, Space Marine kit, might be a tactical squad. I believe this is a Volkite pistol from Forge World, one of their uh, kits. I had extra stuff laying around so we're going to use this. And this sword. Now this guy's not going to be a Dark Angel, though this is a Dark Angel sword from I think one of their upgrade kits. Um, to, to you know spice up your your models but it looks really cool for what I'm going with the only thing I won't be able to convert on these because they're they're easy um, snap together models is I won't be able to do much with their uh, their shoulders unfortunately because you can't you can't get the shoulder pad off so the first thing we're going to do is discuss cleaning your models um, you need to be able to clean the mold lines off properly which is what we're going to start with so I usually get all the, the bits for uh, whatever it is I'm building, and I get them together um, in a pile or a box, a lid, something like that. Um, sometimes if I don't, I'm not familiar with the model, I'll get the instructions and find the exact bits I need. Um, and if I don't need to, I don't build it as I go. I snip everything, clean it, and then build it all at once. I find that's a little bit more efficient for me. It might not be for you. So what we're doing here is we're lightly scraping the uh, mold lines off with our Tacto Blade. Now you'll see this has got a little bit more of a, um, a little bit of plastic stuff left over from the sprue where we cut it. So uh, this one we're not necessarily going to scrape, we're going to kind of shave. Scrape pulling, you know, shave, you're going to angle the blade a little bit different. So we're just going to shave that a little bit. We're not trying to dig it out, we're trying to get it off. And once it's flush we'll do a little bit of a... Uh, that right there. Like we were doing with the mold lines, we'll scrape. Shave first, then scrape. Rotate it over. You know, so I'm looking at the bottom of the uh, holster here. Yeah, just do a light little scrape, get the mold lines off. Now these are things that you might not necessarily have to do if you're just going for a quick tabletop, but if you're trying to uh, add in lots of different um, effects and stages to continue pushing your model to the next level. Cleaning your model is the first step in improving the overall finish and quality. So uh, right here we've got another little piece of flash that's left over from the sprue where we snipped it. So I'm going to do a little shaving and then scraping. And again, you're not trying to dig into the model too harshly. You don't want to leave any uh, crazy cuts or digs. We're trying to be light and gentle and just really smooth that out. There we 
go. All right, so that piece looks like it's good. Now we're gonna come over here, clean off the shoulder, be very careful. And I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes when you snip them, it doesn't come off perfect. Sometimes when you shave them, the curvature of the shoulder blade or shoulder pad can be lost. So we're gonna try and smooth that out very gently and get that little bit of flash eradicated. Out. And sometimes I'll take the, the side of the blade and kind of notch it and then lift forward up to try and get right up next to the, the, uh, the shoulder metal piece here, the little border, and get that off. So we're going to come down here on the bottom uh, under the elbow pad. Just a little scraping. You can do this with a file as well. Um, I'm just used to using the X-Acto blades. So that's what I do. We're getting the underside of the forearm here up to the wrist. Now the gun, we are not going to worry about because that is going to be going shortly. His gun's going to get lobbed off. So let's see, which bit do we want to uh, go for next? Hmm, probably the backpack. That's got a lot of little things. Got a big chunk here we're going to have to get off, which would be good. Give me one second. Okay. All right, so just like we did with the other bits, we're going to uh, lightly kind of scrape. And then we're going to gently shave. And this one's a little bit different because they're on a curvature, so be very patient and gentle. You don't have to go too heavy. Don't be in a rush. You don't want to mess up the curvature. So now we're just scraping the flash off, mold lines. Same thing here, don't go too hard, just a light little scrape to get that mold line off. And again, like I said, if you're basic entry level, you might skip this, but I'm telling you, it's worth the extra effort on all your models to get these mold lines off and flash off, because they're gonna look better. Now this is a big piece of flash from where we snipped. The snips tips could, uh, snip tip could not quite get in there against the sprue to get that off. So we're gonna use, uh, or we're gonna shave, or uh, scrape just a little bit get that off. So with this one, uh, I'll line the blade up and I'll just kind of push forward and notch it in. Push up, uh, up next to this because it's giving me uh, pressure. And push forward until it's gone or at least close. Now we'll do a little bit of shaving. Now if you're going to do what I'm doing and you're cutting towards yourself, be very careful. I find that cutting towards yourself that way gives me more control, but it is not intuitive and you risk cutting your fingers. Uh, so don't blame me if you cut yourself. Uh, be as safe as you think is necessary for your skill level. Uh, I have been doing this a while and I have learned to get used to it and not hurt myself. Though sometimes if I'm working on a big project and I've been assembling for a while, I have put micro cuts in my thumbs and fingers not noticing and or they're raw. So that happens. Get the top of that little thing. You'll see I'm using my fingers to kind of clean a lot of the sprue off as I go. There we go. A little bit of shaving, a little bit of scraping. And I find cleaning backpacks can be one of the more time consuming bits to clean because it's got lots of circular surfaces. Or rounded surfaces, whatever. Spherical, circle, rounded. It's got those kind of surfaces. Just the side here. And you'll, you'll hear me blowing across the model quite a bit. There's a little uh, notch here from the, um, the base sprue where we couldn't quite get the um, snips in easy. So we're just going to put the blade in, push up a little bit, and get that right off. Over here. Scrape, 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 scrape. Backpack should be done. Be good to go. Uh, let's go and do the head real quick. Uh, the bottom's not as big of an issue, but we're gonna get that little extra bit of sprue off. Snip, snip, snip. Again, be careful. Watch your fingers. Uh, we're gonna drag across here. Just clean that off. Bum, 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 bum. We're gonna get the curvature of his uh, dome piece here. His big old Imperium shiny head. Um, clean up the hair here. There we go. Come down the other side. We're going to do the same thing. Try 
gonna get right up next to the hair, make sure there's no flash mold lines, anything left. Cool. Come down this little earpiece here. There we go. There we go. That should be good to go. And let's move across our little makeshift palette here. We'll clean this uh, sword a little bit. Uh, so there's a little bit of chunk of sprue here. So we're just gonna de de very gently shave that off. Do a little scraping to smooth it out. Smooth it out. There we go. Should be pretty good. I'm gonna come across the side of the skull here. So the light scrape. Looks like there's a little bit of flash. All right, so this blade, you want to be very careful trimming the blade because you don't want to create a nick in the blade. It's not the easiest thing, and I've done it by mistake on many occasions. It's not the end of the world, but you just want to be real gentle. Right here, I'm just scraping lightly across the side of the blade. It's going to give it a little bit more of a, an edge, so it's going to sell the blade effect more. You can skip that if you want. Just make sure you get the sprue off, which is what we're going for here because there's a little bit of sprue. I'm just gonna scrape, scrape, scrape. There we go. I think we've got that probably about as smooth out it's gonna get. There we go. So, whoop, whoop. Let's go over that one more time. Okay, so we're done. <clears throat> Get his banner. Now the banner here, you probably won't. We probably won't even mount it to the model because I'll probably try and paint it separate and then glue it on since it's going to contrast the color of what I'll be painting him. Which, by the way, he will be on live stream and given away. So you will have a lightly converted model that is very unique to you. It's not something you buy straight out of the box that everyone has. It's something that was created. So be sure to tune in when I get back from vacation over on Twitch, and you'll be able to watch the live stream as I paint him and enter to win. If you are <clears throat> in the United States, the shipping will be free. If you are abroad, the only fee that you'll have to worry about is the shipping cost, but the model itself will be free to the winner, minus that one caveat. Okay, I think we're probably pretty good. I think it's gonna look pretty decent, like cause that's gonna be on top of this, somewhere in there, like that. That'll look pretty good. Alright, we'll see how I feel about it. I might mount it. Might mount it, because I can always I can always putty it for the live stream. So let's go ahead and shave this shoulder pad again. Be very gentle, very careful. You don't want to dig too far in to the shoulder border because then you're gonna lose some detail and it's gonna look weird. And you're gonna just kind of smooth out the whole area there. Make it believable. And you can see this one is gonna be difficult because it, it lays over right here into the shoulder. The, the border does. So we're going to notch our blade against it and kind of just tilt upwards and try and get the side of it. And it looks like we might have been okay. Now we do this. So this is, you know, it's just one of those things like you're just going to have to practice, be confident, and know that at some point you're going to mess up. But in the words of the late Bob Ross, we don't have, make mistakes. We have happy little accidents. So if you feel like you did mess up on the model, <clears throat> keep going. Fix as best you can. And... Try and uh, work that mistake as you may view it, your happy little accident. Work it into the character of the model. So if you do mess up the shoulder piece blending, maybe you can do it as some uh, battle damage or weathering, you know? Maybe because you messed up with the uh, X-Acto blade cleaning, this Marine now has a spot where his armor was dinged. Maybe he got hit with a blade or took a bolt gun around to the shoulder and his armor saved him, but battle damage remains. That's one of the things I like about 40k, it's just all the fluff aspects. That's why I like painting the models. Gameplay on the other hand, different story. We're not worried about his fingers and his hands right here, that's fine because that's going to be coming off soon. Let's see, we're just going to shave off the back of the hand here, make sure it's flush and clean. This isn't going to mount up perfectly to his wrist because this is from a uh, Cataphracty Terminator Captain, I believe, but I think my gut instinct is this is going to line up great because it's a uh, Terminator hand and the Primaris models are slightly bigger. 
So I think the scale will be pretty close. If not, it shouldn't be too far off. That should be reasonably good. All right, now we are going to get ready and clean the actual Marine himself. So we're gonna shave off the bottom here. Now, <clears throat> if you want to put him on a more ornate base, you might actually snip this, which is pretty easy. You just get your snips and you would uh, put it flush with his foot and just snip and then shave the foot flush and then come over here and do the same thing. I'm not doing that yet because I'm not sure what kind of basing I'm gonna do for him. I have some base material from Brush for Hire that I might start mounting some of the next wave of uh, tutorial miniatures on. If that's the case, I may have to snip them and mount them. But for now, I'm not going to remove that because I'm not sure how he's going to be based. So right here, I'm just catching all the mold lines on the sides of his armor plating. Basically, where the uh, plastic injection mold mashed together for this guy to be created. We're removing all that stuff. GW's done a good job with their their last uh, year or two of kits and trying to make sure that the mold lines are well hidden or in joints where you don't see them. Come down here, scrape, scrape, scrape. Alright, all this ankle there. This side, there's a little bit of a mold line near his knee, so we're just gonna scrape, scrape, scrape. ball joint of his ankle. Come down here. And this will eventually dull out your blade, but I buy them in bulk. I get these little like 15 or 20 packs or whatever from the hobby store. They do last me a while, but um, for you guys who probably aren't assembling the same volume that I do, those little big packs of X-Acto blades will last far longer for you than they do for me. So let's get that little peg cleaned up. Okay, so we're going to come in here and we're going to clean up the top of his helmet. It, uh, it's like a shoulder pad, it's curved, and it's got a little nubby on there from the sprue. So we're going to try and shave that just a little bit. Boop. And then scrape the mold line off very gently. We want to keep this curvature all, you know, as smooth as possible. There we go. Awesome. Okay. Now, you might be wondering why well, we've got a paper clip here. Now, this is for pinning. I normally don't pin models very often, but we're going to do it on these because we're, we're doing stuff in the wrist joints, and because we're we're going to be lobbing off this wrist to put something on, I think the pinning is going to help uh, keep the bit on. You know, it'll look cool, but if you knock them over, super glue will hold for a while, but the wrong kind of torque that's going to put a lot of pressure there may snap it. So we're going to be doing some pinning. So now that we've got everything cleaned, let's see about getting this guy fixed together here. So let's put a little bit of glue on his joints, not the pegs. We're going to do his joints. Doesn't take much, just a wee bit. Do, 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 do. And if it's going to uh, pool, make sure it pools inside, not outside. You don't want this going down his joints on the outside. So get the pegs lined up here. If I could do that, very right. Mash them together. Now pinch and hold firm. Let that glue set a little bit. You should be in good shape. Okay. Alright, so we're 
So we, we're gonna take uh, take him as well. We've got his base. One of the things I like to do is get a little bit of tape. What I'll do is uh, don't stab yourself with this. If you want to use scissors, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna stab this through the tape. We're just gonna create two pieces. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just gonna get a cut going and tear it. So what we're gonna do and mount this guy on his base here. Give a little pressure. He's in. Take our tape, slide it between his legs down by his ankles. And we're just going to lay it flat without it touching his uh, actual feet. We don't want it covering any details later if we paint him this way. And I do a second piece just to help secure him, just in case. Now with your non-snap together marines, you may have to glue them to the base or, you know, a piece of cork, however it is you want to mount them. We're doing this because you can do this stuff right out of the box. Here we go. So I'm going to plop him down. I'm going to come over here. We're going to lob off this guy's uh, hand at his wrist and try and get as close as possible to the wrist and don't mess up the wrist joint. Snip. Hands gone. No, Marine! Now we're going to uh, shave this off or scrape it off. Whatever we need to do to smooth it. See how that's going to line up here. Yeah, so I think that's going to look pretty good. That's not too far off. That other hand might be a smidge small looking, but that should look pretty good. Okay. So now we're going to get the other one. We're going to do the same thing. Try and be as close as we can to the wrist here. I was giving it a little bit of pressure and torquing it because I want this to be smooth as I can. Okay. Alright, looks good. So now the final snip. It's done. It's like pulling teeth. So we're going to come in here and we're going to shave and scrape. Get this wrist all smoothed out. It's not terrible, not terrible at all. I think it looks pretty decent, sweet. Uh, and to be honest with you guys, this is all off the cuff. I have not built this uh, particular configuration before. I went through my bits box, grabbed what I think would look cool, and that's what we're working with. If you have these bits or similar bits laying around, you can probably do this too. Let's do a quick look and see how that head's gonna line up. We might have to snip bottom of the head to get it lined up but I think he's gonna look real good yeah oh yeah he's gonna look uh, gonna look classy all right so next step we're gonna do is we're gonna get our hand drill or our pin vise which you'd think if I was prepared I'd have that out I do I keep mine in this little forge world bag and I mean it's got a uh, it's got my little bits in there magnets because I use all that together never can be too organized so I got this we're going to find us a bit that looks about the same width as our um, paper clip, which I think, I think my standard uh, drill bit for the um, guns is going to work. Let's go ahead and mount this into our hand drill. And we are going to drill a hole very so slightly into his wrist here. Very, very small. There you go. Cool. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing to this hand. Very, very small. Doesn't have to be big. Let's make sure our Hole is the proper size for this. That looks good to me. Let's make sure this one fits. It should. It does. Fantastic. We're going to put a 
couple more turns in this one. Just a turn, turn, turn. That's probably pretty good. The next part's going to be tricky because uh, we're going to try and line these up. And I think we're going to put a little... Try and get this centered on this and do a couple little torques as well. Not perfectly lined up, but should be pretty close. Let's see what we got here. Fantastic. We're going to put a couple more spins into this one. There we go. Sweet. Alright, so we're going to take these. We're going to put a little dribble of glue. Won't take much. Just a little, little dribble, dribble, dribble. There we go. And we're going to mount this in here. And we're going to hold it and let it dry. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And I'm sure you can find other pinning material, but paper clips will work just fine. While this is drying, we're going to go ahead and snip it. We're giving it way more than it needs, but I'm doing that because I'm on live stream and I want to do this. Or not live stream, excuse me. <laughs> I guess I could post edit this, edit this post, right? Man, one would think I planned ahead, but I didn't. It happens. It happens. All right, so I'm gonna come grab this sword. We're gonna do the same thing. Just a little dribble, dribble's fine. Drip, drip. I sound slightly funny right now because I'm holding the. Um, whoops. I was holding the paper clip in my mouth like a needle, like a sewing needle. Let's hold that till it's gonna be flush. You want to get it straight as possible. Do 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 do. Oh look, look. Yeah, sorry. I do I do that all the time too. Uh, you'll notice I'm using a different pair of snips for these. These work good on plastic, but there's some nicks in it in the blade where I've pinched metal. They work better on plastic. These perfect for metal. So now we're gonna snip that. I was cupping it because I knew things were going to fly. And the last one we're going to do is the flag. Just a little dribble. That should be good. And because there's a curvature here, I'm going to snip that off because we want a straight piece. And that curvature is going to be slightly difficult to get straight. So we're going to go with a straight piece right out the gate. Like I said, this part is not 100% necessary. It's just going to help keep your figure together better. And I'm going to cup this. Okay. And it looks like that might have tilted a little bit. It did. So I'm going to get it straight again. Get it straight. Alright, clip, clip. While that dries. Alright, so this should have a little bit of a point to it. Be careful, but we're going to use that to our advantage here in a moment. So we're going to snip this very short now because it should be dry. We're going to snip off the excess. So we just need a little bit of a nub. Now we're going to come over here to this wrist and we're going to kind of try to line this up way we want it to set. You're going to have to extrapolate here because you got that gap. But I think that's probably going to be good and we're going to just kind of twerk this a little bit because we want that to leave a little dot. We want this to be. I think that might be too high so give me a second. I think that might do it. So now we're going to torque this where we put that scoring. And this part's fine if you screw it up. You can re-drill because, I mean, it's, it's inside of a joint that no one's going to see. So let's see if we line that up. I think we might have. Just got to get a little deeper.
Whoop, couple more torques. We're almost there. You notice I'm doing this a little bit of time because I don't want to screw anything up. Just go very slowly. No rush at all. And no competition. And I think I give it one more. One more couple three twirls. That was far more than three twirls. And I think we're good to go. I think we are good to go. All right, so that's done. Let's come over here, do the same thing with this one. Get it real close and snip off the excess. There we go. So now we get just a little, little nub. A little, little nub. That's all we need. Just a wee bit. Come over here. Try and line this up. With what's going to look proper. And I think. Right about there is probably. Probably gonna do it. So now I'm gonna just twirl and mash. Creates a little dimple. So we can line up our hand drill here, pin vise, whatever. Um, while I'm drilling this, please, 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 other than being careful and not stabbing yourself with any of these materials, please don't spend a whole bunch of money on one of these pin vices. You can get one at the hobby store or the internet very cheap and not I don't say internet because it's discounted. I say internet because this brand is cheap and gets the job done. <laughs> I love Warhammer 40k, I love Games Workshop paints. There is no sense in paying what they want for their tools. Their tools are way too expensive for the same thing. Same thing goes with the plastic snips. The only thing different about the GW plastic snips, these little things, is they have a different grip. They look cooler, not $20 or $25 cooler. So don't do that. It looks like that may have been a little bit high, so we're gonna we're gonna come down and we're gonna drill right below and try and fix this because that hole that we initially created was just a smidge too high. And like I said, if you screw up, just put another one and fix it. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Hang on, we're gonna we're gonna do some doctor in here. I'm gonna switch drill bits real fast because that is so close to where I needed it, but just a smidge it off. I'm gonna get a little bit bigger of a drill bit and put a slightly bigger hole. We'll just have to be more careful when we glue. It should still be fine. And if you're worried about it not setting properly, a slightly bigger gauge here. If you're worried about not setting properly after you do this, you can fill the hole with green stuff when you glue. All right, now that should give us plenty of space. Yeah, yeah, so it's lining up pretty smoothly there now. Pretty close, nice turn to it, cool. You notice I haven't glued these in yet though. Uh, we wanna get the arms on the model and then position the hands in the coolest pose possible. That's what we're gonna go for. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing we've done the other ones. Gonna give it a little snip snip. It uh, doesn't have to be very long, so we've snipped that uh, a little bit shorter. I'm gonna come over to the backpack and we're gonna see where we can mount this thing to look cool. It looks like maybe right there. It's probably gonna do it. Uh, I think that's gonna be about, it's gonna line up about where we wanna be, so I'm just kinda doing this to score it. You'll see it left a little, uh, left a little dimple. dimple. That's where we're gonna drill. You gotta be, this one's, this is the you gotta be confident one here because once you do this, there's no turning back. But we're gonna do it. Can't do it till you do it. Can't learn if you don't try. Can't win if you don't play. So, fingers crossed that it's good. And I think that's gonna be a good spot. We just need to drill a little bit deeper. Drill bit there. All right, just a little bit more. We're almost there, guys. A 
step like I said always go in small stages don't there's no rush I think that's about as maybe as good as we're gonna get can we hmm. I think right now it's because there's curvature so let's do let's do a couple more torques here torque 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 I think that ought to be fine. Let's let's shave this off, this top spot, just a little. We're gonna try to flatten it just a smidge. Because we want this to be a little bit more flush. Okay, we might see, we might see just a little bit of the peg through there. I think once we paint it, it'll be fine. Definitely is gonna look good. All right, so now let's go ahead and hook those. <sighs> look, see how the arms are gonna be. Dun, 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 dun. This should <sighs> just snap together some kind of trying to get it in the spot here. I don't want to break it. You know, actually, let's just snap the peg off. to line these up manually but that's okay if you're working on this and you prefer the snap together method you can do that okay. it's just easier for me to visualize doing it this way okay so now let's get some glue on the joint This bad boy up. Looks like it's lined up pretty good to me. There's this little gun. Okay. Let's do the same thing with this one. Let's see what what angle is this gonna look like. Really want it downwards. So let's do a little dribble dribble. Beep, beep. Okay. Let's make sure this lines up. If it doesn't line up with the helmet, we'll move it. I think we might be good. Yep, I think we're good. So, and you'll notice I haven't glued these things in yet because I'm doing it in stages and we're gonna make sure everything lines up before we put glue on that makes a semi-permanent or difficult to undo bond. I think that's gonna look pretty darn sweet. What's this gonna look like? Essentially kinda like this. It's gonna be pretty cool. So I think with that we can probably try and mount a sword now. Put some glue on this joint. I'm gonna line this up in there. Woo! Slide it off like I did. Sorry, I'm sitting here trying to torque it uh, and get it in a way that looks the best angle to me. And I want to make sure it turns out right. Here we go. I think that's going to be fine. Come on. Tilt downwards just a smidgen for me. Tilt down just a smidgen. Do his little gun here. 
then again, the reason for the pinning here is it's gonna help us position these and also give a little bit more structural integrity to the joint. And let's, let's tilt this in line with the wrist because he's kind of at an angle. Just pew, pew, pew. Now, his head looked like the curvature down here wasn't going to quite line up well with the uh, neck joint, so we're just going to try and snip here. Okay. We're going to scrape and shave, just create a little bit more flat surface, which looks like what was going to be required to mount, so let's see. How this is gonna look. Well, when he's not positioned, his head's not positioned in a derp way. Derp, derp. One leg yelling. Aim in that direction, ideally. Let's shave a little bit more off the bottom here. Head sitting a little bit high for what I would like to see. We've cotton the curvature completely off. There we go. His head's gonna sit down further into the neck thing now, which is what we want. So let's get some glue in there. We want the head to sit on top of this hole so from above you don't see some crazy gap. And we're turning him, trying to make sure he's looking down the barrel of that gun. Make it look cool. Go ahead and mount his backpack while that's drying. I always look at the bottom of it and see uh, if it looks flush and lined up. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to put a little dribble dribble on this hole. And, and I had mentioned at the beginning of the, the video I might not mount the back or the shoulder or the... <laughs> the flag derp but i think it's gonna look cooler if we do it now and i'll just i'll be able to use like silly putty to mask it off so let's uh, mount that up there i'm drying we it's not quite super flush because it's a curved surface but once that's painted i don't think we're gonna you'll be able to notice the the uh, pinning as much That's why it's easier to do flat surface to a flat surface with pinning. So, anyway, let's do a quick zoom in here so you guys can see what this guy looks like. And that's just a light conversion. And a couple of my streamers will be very excited, or, or viewers on my stream will be very excited to see this because despite the fact that weapon is not exactly proper for the, the chapter I'm going to pin it this is going to be a Black Templar uh, Primaris, probably Captain Countess. You know, we've only spiced it up a little bit, which I think is a nice little change, all things considered, because this is a snap together um, quick assemble model, and we've actually done something, I think, pretty cool. So, to rehash this, we used the... Primaris from the uh, small $40 starter box that comes with the uh, three Primaris, three Reavers, and um, Walkers and the big ass Nurgle dudes. And we've created basically a captain out of it. Uh, if you got the bits, you can go one step further and put a little bit of topper on this if you want. It gets a little bit higher. Uh, I don't always do those. I think this is going to be good enough because I'll be able to put decals on them, paint this up, a, you know, a cream color to go with the white and the black that this Black Templar will have, throw a decal in the center of that, whatever probably do a, a knee pad thing and stuff and he'll really come together. I think the Centurion head lines up well, Forge World bit lines up well. This hand's a little bit smaller but I don't think it's super noticeable. I think he definitely looks pretty cool. I think most of you guys have been playing long enough will have extra bits laying around or if you don't have extra bits 
you probably got friends who do that'll that'll hook you up. Um, and all we really needed was if you pin it, you need your um, uh, paper clip, you'll need your uh, hand drill, your you'll also need your Zacto blade and snips for the basic assembly, and the bits and glue, and you're good to go. I think anyone can do this, and in a couple of weeks, I would teach you guys how to paint it. So guys, uh, with that being said, this was a very very short uh, uh, attempt at a live well not live stream, live stream sort of video thing for Twitch and it will be exported to YouTube as well. If you enjoyed it, please uh, please share me on social media and encourage your friends to tune in. Uh, they too can also win stuff potentially and uh, can give me feedback and ideas for how to improve my channel. Um, your opinions are greatly appreciated as is your support. So with that being said guys, I think I'm going to pop off here. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, as always, happy wargaming and I'll see you when I'm off vacation.